Well, Incisor has a long history with Ericsson. When we launched the magazine in 1998, uh, Ericsson worked closely with us in the rollout of Bluetooth technology and the partnership worked for many years. I was delighted then that Ericsson joined us at our IoT Roundtable here in Las Vegas in 2018 and to be talking with Magnus Gunnarsson. Magnus, you've spent a couple of days at the show now. What sort of trends are you seeing at CES 2018? I think there are two predominant trends. Uh, being a connected vehicle person myself, uh, both of them are obviously in that field. And I, I think the first one is the self-driving car. We've seen yes. some fantastic use cases and some fantastic showcases with self-driving vehicles outside here on the parking lots and also in the traffic in the, in the Greater Las Vegas area. Uh, the second one would be the smart city uh, and the smart city integration into the connected vehicle, whereas you're getting traffic signal data, uh, road signature data and, and, and all those type of services provided by cities into a connected vehicle. Okay, so within these trends, these are all contributing to what we're calling the Internet of Things yeah. or IoT. How is Ericsson carving a space for itself in that area? Well, first I should say that IoT is an integral part of the Ericsson strategy. It's, it's based on IoT, 5G and, and cloud technologies, obviously. And, and what we're doing is that we're providing IoT technology to our major customers as service operators, or you could call them the, uh, the mobile network operators. In, in certain industries, we are also providing um, uh, IoT technologies to uh, the vertical industries, uh, the car or the vehicle industry is one of them, yes. whereas we are orchestrating connected vehicle programs uh, around the world. Uh, so IoT is, is very, very important for Ericsson, and, and uh, I think especially being here at CES, I think it proves that strategy a little bit. It's all about IoT. Right? Indeed, uh, yeah, I can see that. From my perspective, I would say that companies like Ericsson are providing a critical element of the IoT platform. Uh, well, thank you for that, Vincent. I, I, I'm happy that you kind of spotted that. I, I think when it comes to IoT, or especially when we're now getting to IoT use cases which are not st uh, static, mm. uh, moving uh, IoT use cases, the vehicle being the prime one, of course, connectivity is such an important part of that mix, right? It's vital. Uh, and, yeah. and Ericsson coming with a history, uh, 140 plus year history in connectivity, that is our strong point moving into the IoT. Uh, industry, uh, but but we're doing much more than that. We we do have something we call IoT Accelerator, mm -hmm. which is our IoT platform, and it's it includes many more things than uh, than connectivity. It includes the data orchestration layer, the API exposures, the monetization, and what we're trying to do is to build an ecosystem, an ecosystem where industries and and companies can interact with each other to build this new world of IoT, which, which we're now envisioning. Well, for IoT to work, it has to be um, a very successful cooperation of very many companies and across many different uh, sectors of the industry. Are you finding it's working the way it should? Does everybody want to make this happen? Ericsson's a technology company. You're used to working fast. Is other, is there, are other industries working uh, fast enough? I, good question. I don't know. It's, I, I think we're... We're right now at the tipping point from industry vertical to a more horizontal layer when it comes to IoT, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think from a consumer point of view, it's easy to see that the integration or interoperability has come quite a long way, right? It, you, you download another app and then you control your vacuum cleaner, and another app and you control, uh, control your lighting. But being a tech company in the industry, we know it's a little bit different than that. Yes. There are still some hurdles. Uh, there are still some coordination to do. Uh, things like security, of course, being a, a paramount concern when you get into, especially what I talked about before, the moving objects, right? Yes. Uh, so I, I think consolidation, coordination is happening, uh, but we're definitely not done yet. No. Do you think 5G is a vital component? I think uh, 5G is a vital component, it's one component, it's not a magic bullet. No. But when it comes to the connectivity side, and especially where I belong in, in the connected vehicle domain, mm -hmm. 5G is of major importance and has some really great promises for specifically the connected vehicle, but also other use cases in the greater IoT arena as well. So, we jump ahead and we're standing in this place in 12 months time, what major development do you think there will have been in IoT? Will there be major developments or is it incremental? 
I think there are developments all over the place, right? Mm. Some of the use cases we see here at CES this year, we didn't see last year. Yeah. But last year we saw the connected cars. I think that's more an incremental uh, stepwise approach to car connectivity. Although some, in, some people in the industry think it's very, very quick, it's yes. still an incremental development, right? So uh, coming back in 12 months time, maybe we would see a little bit more of the smart city uh, environment we just started this discussion off with. Yep. Uh, I think companies, corporations, association has been on the IoT uh, or has had IoT on the radar for quite some time. Maybe in 12 months time we would see that more mayors of the world or more cities of the world, more governments of the world starting investing more in IoT. Okay. Well, I look forward to uh, continuing to monitor this with you and hopefully we can share some more information with Incisor readers over the coming year. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you.